Hello, America. I'm Ed Henry here with your Fox News update on Facebook Watch. Breaking news on Florence, now leaving 13 people dead in the Carolinas. The storm turning into a tropical depression as officials warn, yes, the worst is yet to come. Watch as floodwaters crash through a North Carolina dam. Both states, North and South Carolina, facing life-threatening flood levels. Looters taking full advantage of the thousands of people struggling to recover. The thieves ransacking a family dollar, even throwing rocks and glass bottles at photographers who were filming it. One woman allegedly running to stash stolen items in her car in Wilmington. Police so far have arrested five people for looting. You'll get a message from President Trump on your smartphone this week. The new feature on FEMA's emergency alert system is to help reach more people during a national threat. Thursday afternoon at 2.18 Eastern Time, you'll see the quote-unquote presidential alert, reading, this is a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. No action is needed. You can opt out of most messages like severe weather or missing children, but not, not presidential alerts. Today, residents of three Boston neighborhoods hit by deadly gas explosions will finally be allowed to return home. This, as a new gas leak, is detected in the Boston area prompting the governor to declare a state of emergency. Investigators now turning their focus to the utility company, Columbia Gas, and its parent company, which has ties to three previous gas blasts in neighboring states over the last six years. Former Boston Police Commissioner Ed Davis explains where the investigation goes from here. He was on Fox & Friends. There'll, there'll be lawsuits filed in a case like this. There are hundreds of millions of dollars at stake here. But the bottom line is, these happen all over the country. They don't just happen in, in, uh, in the Boston area. So this is a national issue. The explosions killed one person. When you look at this video, you can't believe it wasn't more. 25 others were injured. Not far from Boston, horror on Cape Cod after a boogie boarder dies from a shark attack. 26-year-old Arthur Medici was bit by what some believe was a great white off the Massachusetts beach. This was the second shark attack on Cape Cod this summer alone, but the state's first deadly incident in more than 80 years. Area beaches are expected to reopen Sunday afternoon. Google, meanwhile, has reportedly built a search engine for China to better track its citizens. According to The Intercept, the alarming technology censors some content and actually links searches with the user's phone numbers. The program would remove content deemed sensitive by the ruling Communist Party. Some of the reported blacklisted searches are quote unquote human rights, student protest, and Nobel Prize. Meantime, President Trump is giving the green light for new tariffs against $200 billion worth of Chinese products. That's according to Fox News sources. It will be the latest move in an escalating trade battle with Beijing as the president pushes back on what he calls unfair trade practices. The two nations are continuing to hold talks as China has threatened to retaliate again. The largest farm organization in Texas is now taking a stand against Colin Kaepernick. They're banning all employees from wearing any Nike apparel to work. The Texas Farm Bureau is sending out an email to employees reading, quote, we are choosing to remove our companies from this controversy by discontinuing the use of Nike branded apparel for business purposes. The attire you choose on your own time is a personal matter. They're not the only ones. A Missouri college also ending its use of uniforms displaying the Nike logo. And in Colorado, a store is removing all Nike merchandise. Meanwhile, football Sunday, the Green Bay Packers under fire over their ticket policy for infants. A new mom upset to find out her three-month-old daughter would not be allowed inside the stadium without, yes, her own ticket. Being a hometown team and um, you know family-friendly environment that we've always known the Packers to be, um, that kids could really enjoy that experience. Most NFL teams do allow babies to enter without a ticket as long as they're not taking up any extra seats, sort of like an airplane seat. Johnson says if the team does not change its rules, she's going to stop going to the games. And going on vacation about to get a whole lot easier. Hawaiian Airlines announcing the longest nonstop flight in America, 11 hours between Honolulu and Boston. It's going to start in April. It'll mark the longest domestic route Covering more than 5,000 miles, you might want to upgrade your flight for that one. Boy, first class would be nice. You'll want to see this, too. The emotional moment, a mom is reunited with her son after a long deployment to the Mideast.
Air Force Staff Sergeant Chelsea Speicher overcome with joy there as a two-year-old boy, Bennett, leaps into her arms. She was afraid he would not recognize her. She had been long uh, gone that long. The family was reunited at a Georgia airport after she spent six months in Jordan. And those are your top headlines. We're glad she's home. I'm Ed Henry with your Fox News update right here on Facebook Watch.